15 people, one survivor. Survivor Wii. This may be one of the greatest Wii games of all time. Assuming you have Survivor Brain Rot. And assuming you hate yourself. But luckily, I check all of those boxes. So today we're looking at a game that commits one of the worst sins imaginable. Secretly being friends. Today, we're looking at Survivor Wii. Right off the bat, this game lets you know it's not messing around. The nunchuck is required. It then opens with a cute little Survivor intro they edited together, which is just a collection of previous season's intros. The emergency supply clip, Survivor the Australian Outback. These legs walking followed by map pointing, Survivor All-Stars. This jump, Survivor Vanuatu. Me identifying these is not a flex, it is a cry for help. Now of course I have all my profiles created already, <clears throat> subscribe. So let's select one and be faced with a true dilemma, one player or multiplayer. Hey fellow Survivor YouTuber Bandit Survivor from the YouTube channel Bandit Survivor, do you want to play Survivor Wii with me? No! And why are you in my house again? Damn it, one player it is then. The back of the box promises to bring you all the elements of the hit TV show, and nothing says Survivor like choosing your tribe. Fear not, this is far from the most egregious sin this game will commit. We've got Jalapau and Timbira, which is a pretty deep cut, not everyone will get this reference. Despite my everlasting love for coats, I plan on winning this thing, so of course I choose the Jalapau tribe, and oh my god, it's Jeff Probst. Just listen to him in all his wee glory. But only one can outwit, outplay, and outlast all the others to become the sole survivor. These voice lines right here? Probably the entire game's budget. Or possibly recycled from earlier seasons of Survivor, that wouldn't surprise me. Keep the rules of the game in mind! Keep the rules of the game in mind? Is this a deep cut reference to Attack Zone? Let's meet our tribe. Instead of going with some bona fide Jalapau legends like Spencer, Sydney, and Joe, this game opts for only the most legendary Survivor alumni. We've got Medium Tom, Yule, Austin after D broke his heart, Brian, Sandra, Stephanie? From Roro Tribe. Yeah. Denise, and Kelly. We begin our Survivor adventure with an opening reward challenge. Think of your favorite tribal challenges. Two tribes battling it out for reward or immunity. Probably an obstacle course of some kind culminating in a puzzle that renders the previous obstacle course irrelevant. Now think of that one hero challenge in Survivor Cambodia. Yeah, we're doing that instead. For each challenge, you pick one competitor and one competitor only. This doesn't exactly defeat the purpose of having a tribe. See, each castaway is better at some challenges than others. Since this is take a deep breath, I'll choose Stephanie. Winning the reward challenge will improve your chances during the next challenge. In order to win this challenge, you're going to have to swim fast. If I don't press A, this will in fact loop forever. Here we have Tina ready to show us the ropes for this challenge. I assume it's Tina Wesson, but they never actually specify. It could very well be Timber Tina from Survivor Panama, just as iconic if you ask me. I'm about to drop a bombshell here. You may want to sit down for this one. This is in fact a game for the Wii. We will have to deal with vigorously shaking the Wii Remote up and down repeatedly to accomplish actions. What's for this challenge is a swimming race. I will be giving this a 6 on my 10 point Survivor Wii to Real Life Survivor Challenge believability scale. We will be referring back to the scale for each challenge. Even though it's a semi-realistic Survivor Challenge, it's not fun to control. It's obviously not going to come through in video, but I am shaking my controllers as fast as I can and I'm barely moving. This is a nightmare. And don't worry, every time you lose, Jeff will let you know. You lost the reward challenge. You lost the immunity challenge. You lost the immunity challenge. You lost the immunity challenge. You lost the reward challenge. You lost the reward challenge. So I don't get the reward, but I'm 99% sure the reward challenges are meaningless. 
Case in point, our next challenge is Acrobatics Race, racing across a balance beam. 7 out of 10 believability. Now is a good time to talk about how the developers decided who would be good at what challenge. The answer appears to be... Randomly. And no one looking at Yule here and thinking, now that is a man who's good at Acrobatics Race. For this challenge, I need to hold the Wii Remote vertically to not lose my balance. Not to flex or anything, but this is actually one of my special talents. I can hold the Wii Remote vertically like no other. Look at the line I take, you would not believe how vertically I'm holding this Wii Remote. Ignore that. Naturally, I win immunity for my tribe in the form of the Willard Idol from Survivor Palau. This really confuses me about Survivor Wii. It feels like it has a little easter eggs for massive Survivor fans, but at the same time I have difficulty believing anyone who even likes Survivor worked on this game. Nowhere is that better emphasised than Tribal Council. That's right, I want immunity so I can sit in on the other tribe's Tribal Council. Where Jeff stares at us for an uncomfortably long time, there's no way to skip the stare by the way. I guess I get to watch Timbira vote someone off? Let's meet the Timbira tribe while we're here. You've got Ian, host of Rob Has a Podcast, Rob, Kathy, Sari, Amber, Twyla, Colby, and Earl with a cool hat. And now I... choose who I want to send home? What? The back of the box promises ruthless tribal councils. When I picture a ruthless tribal council, I picture idle plays, blindsides, intense social drama. I do not picture Australian Survivor Brain vs Brawn shenanigans where I become God Decider of Fates. I am informed of what challenge is next, so there is the smallest modicum of strategy in trying to vote off contestants who are best suited for the upcoming challenge. This may be the last compliment I pay to this game. I'll vote off Colby because this game was made pre-Heroes vs Villains and that means Colby still has hope left. Colby is sad about this. Jeff snuffs his honestly embarrassingly short torts. I'm on to the next episode. No post-tribal camp drama or social politics. Why would I want that in my Survivor-themed video game? Instead, we're immediately on to the next challenge. Slingshot Hunt. Before we can start though, we've got to make a quick reference to Survivor Africa and Survivor 46 with a game of rock, paper, scissors. Three, two, one, go! Nailed it. Liz could never. This is a minigame ubiquitous with the Wii. It can be found in countless, oftentimes much better, minigame collections. You point and shoot. This is called Slingshot Hunt. Why are there bullets in the top right of the screen? Also, why can't I reload until I fire all of my not bullets? Also, what are the mechanisms of an on-rails shooter being a survivor challenge? Surely proceeding after shooting all the targets makes more sense, right? 4 out of 10. Of course, I won a reward. Think of all the amazing rewards on Survivor. Flint, fishing gear, fruit. I get a paddle. This implies that the other tribe does not get a paddle in the next challenge. That will make dugout canoe sprint quite a tricky one if I do say so myself. You need to paddle your canoe to the finish line? If only I'd chosen Timbira, Coates would know all about this one. You do this by making circles with your Wii Remote and Nunchuck, which is ridiculous already. What's even more ridiculous is that I'm left-handed, so I need to switch the Wii Remote and Nunsuck around, or paddle completely backwards. Other than that, this challenge is pretty believable as far as Survivor Ch- Is that a snake? Why is there a snake in the Survivor Challenge? Why is Brian so chill hidden it away? Survivor can't just put a snake in the challenge, can they? I'm not buying it, 2 out of 10. I win the challenge, go to Tribal, steer at Jeff, vote off Twyla. At this point, I think you get the picture of how the game is played, so I'll summarize the challenges and tribal councils up to merge real quick. Spear fishing, stab the fish and kick the piranhas. Another time, Survivor Weeds just put a random life endangering animal into a survivor challenge. Timing required for this one is way too precise. Ditch the piranhas, and this is basically a challenge from Survivor Amazon. With them, 2 out of 10. Jungle maze, run around collecting rock fragments. Sure. This isn't much of a maze because the minimap tells you exactly where to go and it controls like Resident Evil 4 tank controls. But it's probably the most realistic challenge we've seen so far, 9 out of 10 on the believability scale. Vote off Amber, no Eds of Extinction this time. Paraglider jump. Please take a moment to imagine the legal nightmare this would be for Survivor to implement. 
Someone would land in the water and die, assuming the parachute even worked. 1 out of 10, although easily the best controlling challenge so far, simply tilting the controller to move, and I get a sling as my reward. Very useful for the next challenge, slingshot. Spin the Wii Remote as fast as humanly possible and let go to send your rock flying. This hurt my arm, but was actually pretty fun. Make sure you wear your wrist strap or else your Wiimote will go through your TV. This challenge may be a reference to the old school weapon challenges, but I don't think they've ever done a sling before. I'll give it a 10 out of 10, I have no trouble buying it. As an aside, the falling over animation is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Denise truly does suck at life. Time to vote off Earl because he will sweep me in a jury vote. Worm Hunt is the exact same challenge as Jungle Maze, except apparently the worms have high nutritional value. It's only slightly different because sometimes you don't find a worm. Does this mean the survivor crew planted the worms in each specific tree? I don't like thinking about this. I also don't like the generic chomp sound effect they use here. Ugh. 4 out of 10 believability, and I win a harpoon. Harpoon fishing is the exact same game as Slingshot Hunt, except now shooting protected fish deducts points. Unique games my ass, Jeff. I mean, my ass! 3 out of 10, but I win and vote out Rob because he has a podcast to go and host. Engulf Stones, for some reason, carries a lot of gravitas from Jeff. Welcome to the challenge of the engulfed stones. We need to carry a stone underwater and come up for air sometimes. It's the exact same as the first challenge control-wise, except occasionally I have to fight a shark. Well, it must be a paid actor considering it just swims in circles at alarming speeds instead of eating me. 0 out of 10, you can't have sharks in your challenges. But we did win a basket of fruit to throw at Ace's face in the next challenge. Never mind, next up is Bamboo River. Tilt the Wii Remote side to side to dodge obstacles and swing the nunchuck to jump. Basically Egg Emergency from Pokemon Stadium 2. Probably too dangerous for real life Survivor, right? I mean, look at this. Three out of ten. Nice work, set a new record. Don't patronize me, Jeff. But now we get to find out how Tribal Council works if you lose. Surely now we finally get a proper vote, right? Some sort of social or strategic maneuvering? No? Timbira, it's your turn to vote. Damn it. Farewell, Medium Tom. Next up is Rapid Descent. It's the exact same game as Dugout Canoe Sprint. Except in this one, my nunchuck didn't work. Not a problem for guys like me though. I simply ghost ride the whip down the side of the mountain and we win. Extremely dangerous challenge once again. Thank you, Survivor Wii. 2 out of 10. Now we have Spear Throw, once again, Survivor All-Stars Weapon Challenge reference. This game has extremely counterintuitive instructions. Run by shaking up and down, but also raise the Wii Remote, but keep running by shaking the Wii Remote. The only way I got this challenge to work was by ignoring the instructions. But still, 9 out of 10 believability. Steer at Jeff, vote off Kathy, and with that... The merge of the two tribes is finally here. It's been a long road to get here, but I'm sure it'll all be worth it. Surely the game switches up dramatically. All the castaways on one tribe will surely bring a new and exciting dynamic feeling to the game of survive. Why am I choosing a tribe member to compete in a challenge? What do you mean the merge has literally no impact on the game? How do you mess this up? Welp. No reason to stop summarizing the terrible mini games, I guess. Keep the rhythm, this is Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, but instead of a cool set of bongos, you get a Wii Remote and Nunchuck. Except if your Nunchuck doesn't work, you're screwed. My Nunchuck didn't work. Either way, 1 out of 10. Time for our first post merge Tribal Council. And it's the exact same as pre merge Tribal Councils. Why aren't we the Forza tribe now? I don't understand this game. Adios, queen. Next up is Long Jump. Count up how many times Jeff says challenge here. You're about to take part in a reward challenge. Winning it will give you an advantage in the next challenge. Will you be able to outjump your opponent during this challenge? Let's find out who will begin the challenge. I need you to know, I am shaking as fast as I can. This is the max speed you are able to run. Even the computer runs like they're going through molasses. Terrible minigame, and too boring to be a regular Survivor Challenge. 5 out of 10. Archery, this is the third weapons-based minigame. 
Fourth, if you count that slingshot shooter. Six, if you count the two fishing mini games. What's going on? Either way, it gives you practically no time to aim, and I completely bots it. 10 out of 10 believability, 0 out of 10 chance you want me on your team in a zombie apocalypse. Austin gets voted out, presumably he's off to fight Wendell. You guys want to see another challenge reskin? This one is Swimming in Choppy Waters, where we swim to collect objects just like Worm Hunt, just like Jungle Maze. Except this time they added the shark from engulfed stones to attack you sometimes. Come on guys, you can't keep adding sharks to your survivor challenges, someone's gonna get hurt. 0 out of 10. I've got to assume the only reason Richard Hatz isn't in this game is that programming him to bite the shark would just take too much effort. I do manage to win the immunity idol. Guys, we are merged. Where's my immunity necklace? I'm taking my anger out on Siri. One more immunity win and I'm in the clear. It's another boat race. Damn it. As long as I don't need to spin the nunchuck in a circle, I'm fine. Shoot. This challenge took me four and a half minutes. Nice work. You've set a new record. Shut up, Jeff. Also, I don't see a sailboat working on Survivor. Two out of ten. Farewell, Denise. Go and become a sex therapist. Another challenge reskin? Remember Bamboo Dodds? Which, as we established, is already a reskin of Egg Emergency. This one is the same, except you collect rainwater. Riveting. 3 out of 10. Goodbye, Stephanie. Now we simply ignore health and safety regulations and zip line as fast as we can. Sharin would love this one. Break. I break, yeah. Coming in way too fast. Yeah. Although there are obstacles in the way, which makes this a completely unsafe challenge. Although blasting through them at high speed appears to be a legitimate strategy. 2 out of 10 believability, 10 out of 10 lifelong injuries. Sorry, Brian. He does win a night on a yacht, though. Cheeky Survivor Borneo loved ones visit reference. Now for the challenge that actually matters. This one combines vigorous free remote shaking with nothing. That's basically it. The course itself is very Survivor Core, 9 out of 10, but this is the worst controlling mini game. Look at how slowly I crawl here. I had to do this several times. Several means seven. I put him blast ahead and I lose. Again. Damn it. Brian, presumably incoherent after all the abuse he got on the zip line, mercifully is voted off and it's down to the final three. You want another reskin game? It's Jungle Maze slash Worm Hunt slash Swimming in Choppy Waters again. This time you need to collect things in order. However, the minimap is very unhelpful in showing what is and is not a wall. So I lost. Again. But no sharks tried to kill me, so 8 out of 10. Kelly, your fellow tribe members think that the adventure is too hard for you. You've been voted off. What the heck, Jeff? That's so mean. But it's the final two. Yule versus Ian. Time to finally get some social game in Survivor Wii. Time to face the ju- Huh? What do you mean there's another challenge? The famous pole challenge awaits you. Ah, uh, yes, the famous pole challenge. A classic. Hang on a second, this is literally the final challenge in Survivor Cook Islands. Alright, that's a 12 out of 10. We actually got a legitimate Survivor challenge reference. You know how long I've been waiting for this? In a Survivor game, we finally get an actual Survivor challenge. Time to hold the Wii Remote vertically. It's like I was made for this. Now, do I vote Ian off or... No? It's time to face the jury? What? Come on in. Welcome to Tribal Council. Jeff, what do you mean, come on in? They're already there. Brian, it's your turn to vote. The game forces you to watch each individual juror stand up and cast their vote. One at a time. They don't even fold the vote correctly. This is worse than Survivor New Zealand. Jeff reveals the winner and... Yule! I've done it. I've won. Hoist that gold willard statue above your head, Yule, for you are a champion. Yet I feel empty inside. I expected this to be a terrible Wii game, but I was hoping for at least some fun survivor references for me to point at. Aside from the castaways, who do not look like their counterparts, Jeff Probes, and the famous pole challenge, this is nothing like survivor. 
it has no elements of social game, barely any strategy involved, and worst of all, it was never Survivor. It's a Colanta game, reskinned for a US audience. Just like all of these Survivor games. They're all Colanta. That's why they call it the famous pole challenge. That's the final immunity challenge in almost every season of Colanta. I can forgive bad graphics. I can forgive constant minigame reskins. I can forgive unresponsive controls. I can even forgive not being very fun. But can I forgive it for not even being Survivor? Maybe not. To be honest, if you're a Survivor fan like me and you do find this game cheap somewhere, I kinda just recommend it. Seeing we Jeff probes was enough for me to feel like I was getting my money's worth. It's just dumb fun. I'd love to look at lots more auxiliary Survivor media, so let me know what you think down in the comments below. Until next time, I've been Henry Hickman Survivor, and I'm off to look for more worms of high nutritional value.